I guess while we were waiting, if any of you want to share with me kind of where you are in the genealogical process, if you're, go ahead and you know, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Well, I probably, I've been fooling around with genealogy for, off and on for a long time. But this past year, I've had lots of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten a lot done this past year that I hadn't done before. Right. And you're getting to know those online sources, I bet, a lot more. Yes. Mm -hmm. David? Well, I've kind of been at it for years on and off, and, and I don't know what you know, I would say somewhere between a maybe intermediate, I guess. I, I don't know. Somewhere in that area, I would, if I had to pick one category, I'd say somewhere between beginner and intermediate. Some days I have days when I think I'm a beginner, and then other days I think I'm advanced. So, you know, depends on if I'm finding that record I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> Well, occasionally I run across some that, that I wasn't even looking for, and that's always kind of exciting to, to stumble across something that you weren't expecting even, but. Found one anyway. like that the other day. Hmm. I'll, I'll share that later on in the, because I found a new website that I, and I found a record. I was very excited and I was just playing with it for you guys and found a, an, an ancestor I never had before. Well, I had them, I just hmm. didn't know them. How's that? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, sounds neat. I have a question. Is this, will this be recorded to watch later? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to leave before, probably before it's over with. But anyway, I thought I'd, mm -hmm. um, if there's anything after I do yeah. cut out, I'll try to get on later and see what, what I missed. So. Mm -hmm. And okay. I feel like even though it's Genealogy 101, as far as a title, I, I just think it's because I wanted to get to know everybody's methodology a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that way I kind of know where my people that I'm going to work with are coming from. Um, but there's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And it's about five after. So I'm not sure if we'll have other people joining or not, but I figure we'll, they can join us in progress. How's that? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Did anybody else want to share? I'm not sure. Not every, sometimes people don't have a mic. Feel free to type in the chat, whatever. I've been doing genealogy for a while. I have back in undergrad is when I actually got interested in it. I really wish I'd gotten interested in it when my grandfather was still alive, who was born in the 19th century and experienced so much that I missed, right? I didn't get, I, I didn't care about that when I was younger. But as an undergrad in college, I got really into it. I did several presentations for the history club that I was president of. Um, took some graduate classes when I got into graduate school, um, genealogy seminars and whatnot. So I've been kind of like you guys working at it for a long time, but there've been periods where I've set it aside and come back to it. When I go back to my initial methodology, I kind of shake my head a little because I didn't keep track of my sources. I didn't write things down. I have miscellaneous random pieces of paper. And those are some of the things we can talk about as we go through today. Um, but this idea was put forward. Um, I don't know if either, any of you are familiar with uh, Thomas McKenty. He runs a site, genealogybargains.com. I have it on the screen just because he puts a lot of deals on there. Um, and he has uh, some books. The Genealogy Do-Over Workbook is actually free on his site through like July. It kind of struck a chord with me because I have this tree on ancestry. And I have verified some of it, but not all of it, right? Some of my stuff in the early days was sloppy. And this idea of starting over right, this do-over concept kind of struck me, right? Um, he even went so far as to say he created a separate tree where it's a verified tree and an unverified tree. So you, you know the verified one is completely sourced. So I, I kind of 
found it helpful. So those of you who have been doing it, and this is more of a refresher or you are the, you know, the do-over concept, right? Um, somebody in the group, I'm on his Facebook group for genealogy do-over, said not they didn't want to do a do-over, but they're going to do a, uh, I can't remember if it was like a go-over kind of, right, where they would just go back and review everything. So I, I, and I thought it was kind of cool that it's free on his site. Plus he has a lot of other bargains on there that if you're not familiar with that site, any of you ever used his site before? No. He was very helpful. No. He was at Roots Tech. He, um, I watched one of his presentations there and I emailed him. He, he's emailed me back several times, very you know, helpful. So if that book helps you out, it's not the obviously the only book on genealogy out there. I'm not saying that. I'm just thinking that this idea of a do-over is worth a thought. Now, you guys, at least David and Sandy, I'm not sure about our other person that's on here, um, are probably way past this first part, this brainstorming, those initial people, right? And I did provide an ancestral chart in the handout pack. Um, it's not, it's not, there's many out there, right? It's not, it's just one I like. Um, and I did provide that and it can be photocopy so you can have those charts, those handwritten charts. Did any, do any of you use the handwritten ancestral charts? Mm, not really. Not really? Do it all online? Well, yeah, I think pretty much everything lately that I've done, it has been. Mm -hmm. I did when I first started, or if I start a new family group, sometimes I want to see what it looks like. So I write it down because that lets me, you know, kind of hone in on them. Um, definitely writing in pencil because things, you know, sometimes need to be erased. <laughs> Capitalizing last names. I find that to be interesting because that is considered one of those genealogy things to do. But I notice places like Family Search doesn't do that. So that's one of those things like, I have a system for the ones I capitalize. I actually use it as a system for my direct line versus the collateral lines. I capitalize the last names of the people in my direct line. Um, this is one, you know, listing women by their maiden name. You guys probably know that. I'm not dealing with the beginner group, really, I don't think here. So, you know, and the, how to write the dates and full name places. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this page because I think you guys are beyond this for the most part. But those are some of those things I didn't realize, which is why I have a lot of last names in my ancestry chart that aren't capitalized. And when I first started, I actually put the married names and not the maiden names. And I will say, I know I've done some family search webinars lately, and they said that you know, if you don't know somebody's name, just leave it blank. Don't put unknown. So a little tip there from them. So now I kind of want to know if you're not, if you're doing it online, what are, which are you using? What trees, what programs? I'm on it. I've been using the, uh, Family search. Okay. I think that's about the only thing I've I've tried so far. So family search and Sandy, you said ancestry. Ancestry, and I just started putting um, stuff on the family search one tree. I like family search. I'm actually trying to get us into their affiliate library program, so we have access to more sources. Yay! Um, that's in process. We're working on that. We have ancestry library here, which is an advanced for, you know, it's kind of like you can get the paid information. It's just not connected to your tree. Have you guys used the ancestry library? I know right now you can use it from home, but that will be ending at some point. Um, family search, my ordeal there is that it's open edit. So anybody can change. And I had some people change some things on my ancestors to something wrong or they connected them to the wrong parent. Like I had my ancestor connected to the proper parent and then 
somebody else connected the same person to another set of parents. And it was frustrating. So um, Thomas McKenty, not to mention him again, but he actually recommended Wikitree to me, which I had used before, but had walked away from it, didn't follow through. But it is that kind of collaborative tree. And what I like about this is there's a lot there. Um, there's a lot besides just the trees. There's any of you go on Wikitree at all? I've been on it a few times. Yeah, there's a lot of groups, forums, discussions that you can get into that can be really helpful. Um, I just uploaded my file into that tree though, and you have to go through each person in a process. They don't just upload it, right? So that's where I'm at with that one, but it's one to think about just simply because it has the collaborative, it's public, it's free. With like my heritage and ancestry, they're not. That's I, I struggle because I have everything on ancestry, but I'm not a paid member now. I was before. So what, Charlotte, what do you use? Let's put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get back. We, our group was on a different site and I'm trying oh. to send them a message to get them to you. Oh. oh, okay. So you are working to bring the to try to band get the together group back to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. We'll give her a second to do that. Yeah, I like Family Search. Has anybody played around with the um, famous ancestors button? Oh, that's kind of fun. It tells you, and now it's completely based on the accuracy of the tree, which is a open edit collaborative tree, but it shows you all the famous people that you're related to, like your ancestors. So that's kind of cool. I got a lot of presidents. What I found is a lot of my ancestors aren't on the tree yet. I'm putting them on for the first time. Oh, wow. So I haven't connected to a lot mm -hmm. yet. A root but stack. I haven't very far with it either. Yeah, the root stack, they use that tree to tell you how many people at the conference that you are actually related to. Right. So that was kind of a cool option. When I got started on it. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, well, I want to know if I'm really related. So then I started going back into family search and and I've done a few of their webinars lately to try to help me with because their site can be sometimes a little, I think, difficult to figure out at times if you want to change something or update. So I've been doing some of their webinars, especially if we do end up being an affiliate with them. I want to be well versed in it. How's it going, Charlotte? Are they going to find us? I, I hope so. Um, <laughs> and a message, it may take them a minute to get to the right site. Okay. Ev evidently, um, they sent out another link and that's what we all use. What the link that Bob sent. See, I don't, I sent out one link to the people who were on my registry list. Well, somehow Bob got a different link. And so that's where we all were. <laughs> and there were four or five of us. Okay. So we'll give it a second. Sign in. Nope, I heard a beep somewhere. Is that somebody? Anybody have any stories they want to show, share about your genealogy experience while we wait for them to join us? One of the things I've started looking at is my heritage. Mm -hmm. um, if for no other reason than the photo mm -hmm. um, options yeah. they have. Yeah. They've been, really been helpful to, to clean up some of my photos. I mean, they recolorize mm -hmm. some of those that are have turned yellow. Yeah, I haven't actually played with that much. I need to. But I know if you were at Roots Tech, you know, they introduced the new animate the picture. Yes, yes. That's really interesting. Well, at first I thought it was creepy, but then You're I was like, well, sometimes. 
<laughs> then I was like, well, it's kind of unique in being able to see your ancestor move, right? Like, yeah, I know. So I passed the creepy. Now I'm just, I'm interested a little. <laughs> I know I did one of my grandfather who passed away in 1971. And it was, it was really, it brought tears to my eyes because it just mm -hmm. seems so much like him. Oh, wow. That's great. And it was just like, wow. <laughs> what I remember. I did a thing during Roots Tech, they had where you could transfer your DNA from another source over to them for free. So I did that with them over Roots Tech. That was, but I haven't done much with my heritage otherwise. I started out in Family Tree Maker years back and they were connected to Ancestry. So that's how I landed, you know, using Ancestry as my main tree. Same here. Yeah. But I am exploring some other trees. I've heard family um, or my heritage. What There's some other ones I, that people have mentioned lately that I thought about mm, maybe trying. I know I have some on the list that I included in my handout, you know, archives, find my past, um, my heritage, Roots Web. I think somebody in the genealogy group might have mentioned Roots Web. Maybe. I, use, I use reunion because I have a Mac. Oh, okay. And it works better with the Mac program just for Macs. And I love it. It's got so much uh, capability to store pictures and all kinds of things. Okay. The only problem is, is that then when I go on ancestry, I have to update my tree every once in a while and most things don't transfer. So I just have a basic tree on ancestry. I learned on Ancestry not to save from their records because when I did that when I was a member, those I can't access now that I'm not. So mm -hmm. I've learned to download everything and then yeah. save it on Ancestry so that I can access it later. Once I download it and put it on my own program that's on my computer. Mm -hmm. But I am, I'm going to see what I think of Wikitree once I get all those people kind of loaded in there. Hello, there we have Mandy. Hi, Mandy. Hello, apologies for being late. I had an intern check in, so, hey. It's all right, hey. We're just talking about family trees and if you use an online one or a program, what one do you use? Nope, Bob is calling me right now. <laughs> Bob, I'm in the middle of, <laughs> call Charlotte. <laughs> um, hmm. My watch is telling me. Hi, Bob. If you watch this later. <laughs> nope, we got somebody else. We had a uh, the few of the people sent got a different link somehow. We're not sure, and they're trying to join us. So that's what we're in the process. We're kind of waiting for them and just talking about different options for online trees. Thank you for calling the reference department. This is Jessica speaking. How can I help you? <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna maybe move along. Maybe I know he just called, but I can't really multitask that well <laughs> to like send an email, and I would mess up my screen. I'll see and... if I can send a message to him directly. Okay. I mean, I want them to be able to join us. I just. I made them set up my screen perfectly so that I didn't mess it up. <laughs> well, got... Ros Rosalind's mailbox is full, so she won't get the message. <laughs> okay. We do have new people joining, so that's good. So yeah, I sent out a link to everyone that had been registered and a couple of people in the genealogy group on Facebook that I'm in. I'm not sure where the other link came from. So anyone that got that link, I apologize. Welcome all the new people who came in. So far, we've really just talked about that getting started, brainstorming, writing everything down you can remember that you'll need to confirm later. We've talked about 
what online tree you would want to use, right? Um, the pros and cons of family search uh, being an open edit tree. I've run into some of that. But it is kind of nice because you're not the only one working on it. You have all these other sources and resources. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> now, how many of you experienced people I know that are in this group um, set a research goal before you start? I see Sandy laughing. <laughs> Setting goals. Yeah, yeah. Like having ice cream, it melts. <laughs> I like that. I've never heard that one before. Yeah. Yeah. If you get into it, you're down a rabbit hole somewhere else. I'm very bad about the rabbit holes. So I'm I'm, I'm sharing the ideal. Remember the ideal, I was telling my students, the ideal and the real aren't always the same, right? So <laughs> the ideal is to set that research goal and not get sidetracked. Not going to lie. I get sidetracked. I go down rabbit holes too. <laughs> My research log kind of proves that at times because I'll start with a person and I have them on my research log and I have the goal, what I want to find out that day about them. And then all of a sudden in my research log, you'll see all these other names that aren't necessarily of the same like family grouping, right? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? Yeah, but this idea of setting a goal, what do you want to learn? Trying to stay focused on that it's the ideal right but definitely i think you should research both direct and collateral lines everybody knows what what we mean by that mm -hmm. right um i mean i'm sure how many times have you found the right family just there's bob hi bob hello hello hey. hello oh we got them they're here they're showing up yay we will work on that one for next time, making sure everybody has the same link. <laughs> um, so that direct and collateral lines, you know, you look for siblings because sometimes in a census, right? And you, you see this list and that's kind of how you know that you have the right family, that you're not in the wrong place. So at first I only did direct ancestors. And then I learned collateral can tell you also they might show up somewhere that your ancestor doesn't and you can learn locations, right? You can learn part of the family history from that collateral line. So I don't know if you guys do that as well. I'm assuming that you guys do a lot with your collateral lines. I do. <laughs> yeah, for that reason, right? Yeah, for sure. Find, I found a lot of things with my collateral lines. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of people who have the same names. And if you're looking at like a record and they have the same name, but you don't know the siblings or you don't know, you can't always identify that that's the right person. That's what happened with that family search relative of mine. I mean, what do you think the odds are that the Francis Green married Eliza and had a child with the same name as, you know, Frank Green, and then my ancestor was Francis M. Green, who married an Eliza, who had a child named John Green. So without the siblings, it was really kind of hard to sort that. I mean, you have to kind of know the rest of the family to say, no, wait a minute, this isn't the right John Green. But one nice thing for me was my, my great-grandfather that I had this issue with on Family Search actually lived until three weeks before his 100th birthday. So I could kind of tell by the date that, you know, this was probably my guy, right? <laughs> Not theirs, because <laughs> he lived 100 years. So um, completing each ancestor, and I put complete in parentheses because anybody who's done this for any amount of time laughs about that. Complete, is any ancestor ever complete? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, all the books say complete each one before you move on. Well, verify, right? Verify, get enough evidence that you know that the, what you have name wise, maybe um, some of the other stuff is correct, right? Not just information, but real evidence. 
but complete, it will never be complete. <laughs> I know there are relatives that my mother is still working on 40 years later trying to find, and we keep thinking we found them and then we didn't, mm -hmm. we could verify that that was not the right guy. And yeah, we're, we're still, we're still working on some of those earlier ones where records aren't quite as, you right. know, available. Well, new records appear online all the time too. Things are getting yeah. digitized all over the place. Mandy and I know this. You know, like we, we talking about digitization ourselves all the time with historical documents. You know, so new information is popping up. So yeah, I, I stumbled actually on a website the other day that I found new information. So I was very excited. Um, so this idea of being complete, it's never really complete. The big thing is don't be a name collector. Okay, if you, anybody, when they first started, just every name they saw, wrote it down and co collected that name like it was gospel without knowing how to prove it. I mean, I'm raising my hand. I'm guilty. <laughs> I got, I did some name collecting. Yeah. And every once in a while, when I go down the rabbit hole, I think Sandy mentioned the rabbit hole maybe earlier. Yeah, the rabbit hole. You know, I do still, I don't want to lose that name. That's why I have the unverified family tree and the verified family tree so that I can name collect on one, which is the bad side of me, right? And then I can verify on the other. <laughs> but the idea is to get enough evidence, right? Enough proof, because the proof and evidence, I'm gonna talk about these again later, but they're important, right? You, you can't just go by one record or you can't definitely can't trust somebody else's research, say on family search without checking it yourself, without seeing the sources. All, all traps I fell into when I first started, especially when things started to go online. Oh, look, this person has the tree. Oh, they have a different name. They must be right. <laughs> yeah, I've learned. Hey, I think the gang's all here. Yeah, I see that, I'm very excited. I don't yeah. know. Roz, did Roz get the message? Roz is here. Oh, Roz is here. Daryl's here. Charlotte's here. Your I, mailbox I was full, Roz, so I wasn't sure you got it. Um, I changed email addresses. Okay. That's what. Okay. Supposedly, we have 11 out here. Who are the other six? I have five on my screen. Oh, you have to toggle the arrow buttons yeah. on the right or left to be able to see the rest of the people. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. That's it, it, you can mess with the view too, but so I think when people are starting, this one is the biggest question. How do you find the records? I think most of you have worked with this enough from what, you know, just our initial conversations that you kind of know some of the main sites. I did include with the packet um, some online sources for you that you can check. Um, I found some new ones even since I've done that packet that I shared here. Um, the family history checklist is also a big start. But one of the things that I pulled my group that I, that I there's like 20,000 members of the genealogy do over group on Facebook and I pulled them. You know, if you were starting over, right? Brand new and, and wish you knew one thing, right? What would it be? And there were very, a couple of very predominant answers and probably the second most used response was talk to family. Yeah, um, ask them, interview them and record it. I mean, I know that sounds awkward, but I actually recorded a sit down with my aunts where we were going over family pictures and whatnot. And I recorded it and we kind of all forgot that that recording was on. Believe me, because of some of the things that were said, we forgot. <laughs> um, but I can go back to that later and be like, oh, that's who my aunt said this was. But you know, talk to those people, talk to, you know, get the information, get the documents. Um, so that's kind of one of the big answers that those people overlooked and, and wish they had done. Um, I do have a couple other resources that I shared in the handout. And if you guys didn't get the right link, you probably didn't get the handout, a group of you. So we got to make sure you get that. Um, did you get the handout? I got it. No, Russ didn't. I probably don't have it. Okay. Well, I will make sure. I'll send an email. 
and make sure you have it. Um, there's a family history checklist. I'll open this up. And if everything works right, it should pop open right here on the screen for us. There we go. So this kind of gives you different records that you might want to look and you can do a checklist. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't write a family person on the list and go down the checklist, but I will use this to think about, okay, where haven't I looked? To trigger my memory, right? Because there's a lot of places to look for somebody. Um, and I included this for you with that packet. And then I got to make sure how to get back. The record selection table is kind of cool because if you want to find out somebody's birthplace, which records are most likely to have that. And again, people who've been doing this a while kind of know where to go for this. But if you know somebody who's starting out and you're trying to help them, a record selection table can be helpful. Don't forget about the databases at local libraries. Um, a lot of you are Maslin Library people, um, some, I did have some people from other areas. So whatever the local library is, and for us, I mean, we have these databases here. An Ancestry library is great because I don't wanna pay for an Ancestry membership. So I use that and I download it and then I just carry it right over. Sorry, Ancestry. Bold three for military, heritage quest, Maslin memory. How many of you, Maslin people have utilized Maslin memory. It is the best thing ever. <laughs> and I will be working with um, tech services and some other individuals here, hopefully to add to that content here soon. Yay. But it's a great place for city directories and um, Ohio obituary index can help you to find where in the paper you need to find that obituary for your ancestor. Um, so it's a great place. Your books, your books are in there. So um, newspapers. So yes, we have a great collection of microfilm here. And if you know anybody who keeps the independent for a really long time around the house, I really need May of 2020 or we will not have May of 2020 in our collection. Um, we do not, because we were closed. And I, so I'm hoping somebody out there might know somebody who keeps the paper around for a long time because we do not have that entire month of a pretty historic time in, in, in the world. Um, so spread the word, Maslin Independent, May of 2020. Any copies? Um, but you do have online sources two here. The fire maps, and, you know, maps are amazing. There are some great YouTube videos too out there about how to use maps in genealogy. And we do have the Sanborn fire maps connected here. So don't forget about the resources at the library. Don't forget about me. You can make an appointment with me. Yay. <laughs> Online sources. I have a, a pretty extensive list that I gave. Um, I put the databases on there. If you have this on your computer, everything is hyperlinked. So like the database thing that I just went to, you can click it. The website, uh, if you click it, it'll take you there. Look at what I did for you. <laughs> but pretty, you know, but if there's ones that you see that I missed that you think are great, tell me. Because guess what? Under the Irish websites, I found a new one. And it is not there, irishgenealogy.ie. And I found my, my goodness, fourth great grandfather that I never had his name on that site. And it was an original source, not a derivative. So I was very excited about that. And I did, um, I put that website here in case some of you want to track down that Irish heritage. I. I found my a couple like a marriage record for my third great grandparents which is where I got my fourth great grandfather's name from I found my grand my great grandmother's birth record from Ireland so sometimes getting those European documents are a little harder or companies like ancestry you pay have to pay more to have access to them 
So that's a, I, I thought that site was pretty good. 12 Key is a, is a blog done by a, a woman who works for the National Archive. And I watched a webinar with her the other night. So that is one I would add to the list under um, tech tool, maybe tech tools and other information, right? Because it's a useful blog because she works at the National Archive in DC. So those are new ones I've discovered since I did the list. And I will add them to my master list. So if I reproduce this list again, they'll be on it. But anybody have a site that they just absolutely love? That's their favorite place to go for, for records? I like uh, Find a Grave. Find a, oh, you're right. I think Find a Grave has so much. I agree. It is an amazing, like, uh, crowdsourced thing that you can add to and you can find and people are so helpful if you need somebody to photograph a grave you can request mm -hmm. it and yeah it's wonderful i know mandy likes it because she and i were kind of nerding out a little at midnight one night talking local history and she used find a grave to find an answer for us so <laughs> i know she likes it <laughs> a small glimpse into your Messel Museum and Messel and Public Library uh, staff at midnight. We're midnight. We're hanging out. <laughs> um, there's one called um, Irish Ancestors. It's um, uh, www.johngrenham. I believe it's G R E N H A M, and they have maps from Griffith's valuation where you can see which area mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. Ireland that your people mainly came from. Oh, and you that's can, great. Yeah, you can like sort of take your um, your, grand, your great, great, great grandparents, look at the two names and see if you can find where they intersect on the map. And that might be the area that they're from. Oh, wow. I'll have to, I'll have to get that one from you, Russ. Cause I don't okay. think I have that on my list. <laughs> see, there's always new ones out there, you know, and. I mean, Cindy's list is a big one. I'm sure you've heard and used Cindy's list before. Um, genealogy bargains I mentioned earlier. Um, I Genealogy gems, that's Lisa Louise Cook. She has a lot of YouTube content. And I don't know if you, if you ever watch any of the YouTube, there's a lot of genealogy information as far as where to find records and how to use maps. Um, Lisa Lu Louise Cook does a, how to use Google maps in your genealogy one. So YouTube is a pretty good source um, for some of this. I think I just stole my own thunder on like two slides from now, but <laughs> I tend to do that. So methodology, the biggest response from like 150 people when I pulled them yesterday about that one thing that they wish they'd done differently at the very beginning. And that was things like organization, keeping citing their sources, keeping a research log. And I'm right there with them because I, I didn't put where I got something from. I just had it. What did I need to put where I got it from? Why would I need? Yeah, so guilty, but um, develop that organization system. I saw at Roots Tech a presentation where the girl did, I've always done four names, um, four folders, right? I did the four grandparents' names, but she did eight. And I'll show you in my research log here. I gave you a family group sheet. I'm sure you're all familiar with those. Again, use these resources as you would like. If you, you know, if somebody new comes into the genealogy society, we have, we have this packet we can give them. But my research, whoa, what happened? That is not where I wanted to be. Hold on, we're gonna go back, I think. Uh, there we go, research log. I gave you a plain one, a uh, basic, but I use Excel. Now notice I do have eight names here, but I only have four files because I'm just getting my head around this idea of using eight names instead of four. How do you guys do it? Do you use four or do you use eight? Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 
I included those names, but they're under the same files. And of course, this is a new one that I just recently started, so it doesn't have as much information as my old handwritten ones, but I did hyperlink the document so I can click it and it will take me directly to that document in my, if I was home sitting at my computer, it would take me to that document. I have, whether it's original or derivative, right? If it's a transcript, I'm sure we've all experienced those transcripts where they tried really hard, but her name was Arda, not Ruth. And I know that, but the transcript said it was Ruth. I'm not alone here, right? You've all experienced a transcript where they met. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm watching your faces. I need to watch the camera. So I'm talking to you, but I'm watching your faces. <laughs> but yeah, I've got different source citations for different groups. See, my Irish heritage, which I've got my, my Celtic knot on. And I don't know if you noticed, but the slides are the color of the Irish flag with a little gray mixed in, but. Do any of you use Excel as a research log? No. No. Hadn't thought of it. I really like it because I can sort things then. That is a good idea. <clears throat> because you can like sort and it'll sort the whole document based on a location or mm -hmm. you know whatever so I, I i really like it um thomas mckenty has a free one on his site but his is even more involved than mine i don't i like to keep things simple if i think of something i want to add i'll add it later but i looked at his and used it kind of as a rough guide so typically for me for research, I use um, Microsoft Publisher because I'll like screen capture something online and I'll like paste it in there as a whole screen capture. And then, you know, beside it, I'll, I'll type in some notes or, you know, point an arrow if there's like a map, like this is the thing that we need to look at. And uh, obviously it's not quite as detailed as yours is, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like a weird like pulling of, of photos and visuals and that it's, works best for me. It's not on this one. But I have, I actually have an, a log for relatives, right? Um, and if I send somebody an email on a site that's a potential relative, right? The DNA matches or like family search, I put down their name, how they're potentially related, um, what type of contact I made with them, their response. And I, I actually put pictures in there in Excel, like, Little in the little bar at the end, I have a picture of them so I can reference that if I need to. Now that's not the type of pictures you're talking about, but I do that. <laughs> well, it's good to know that you can in fact paste photos into Excel. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Awesome. It, yeah, I was going to show you, I was going over, I'm like, oh wait, that's in my relative log, not my ancestor log. Anybody need like 12 logs? Because <laughs> So the family group sheet, it's that written form. There are ones that you can go on to say ancestry or family search and hit that. I think, I know family search has it. Thinking that, does ancestry? I'm trying to remember. I know family search has the fan and I love the fan. You guys know what I'm talking about? The, where it lays it out in a fan for you? No. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So organization, keeping track, citing the source in case you have to go back or need to prove it. This idea of the genealogical proof standard often referred to as GPS in the books. So they're not actually using a GPS like to get around. It's the genealogical proof standard and they do abbreviate it a lot in genealogy books. Um, having the evidence have, that, that equals proof, right? Because you collect different clues and different bits of information, but you have to have a certain level of that before it becomes proof. And that is what keeps us from climbing that wrong family tree. Anybody ever climb the wrong family tree? Yes. How far did you climb? I bet it was frustrating. <laughs> and, you know, three generations before I realized it was wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... 
that's what that proof standard does is helps us to verify. And I am going to in September, um, which I believe is the 15th of September tentatively, do an evaluating evidence workshop on this topic, you know, get a clue. You know, I like to play with names, get a clue, evaluating evidence, where we can look at some of that. You know, what is it just information? What actually equals proof? Thank is you. Some, is that something you guys want to hear about? I hope. Yes, that would be good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now in June, I believe it is, we are do, I want to do a link with the um, Imagine Your Story summer reading program. So I thought I would go into some of the ways we can preserve our memories, be it you know photos or whatever. And of course at Roots Tech, I went in to talk to one of the vendors who has a, a really cool program for organizing digitized material, because it's what we're getting in this world. And it turns out that I was related to him according to the Family Search website. There you go. <laughs> but Collection Air is the, the product. And the big one, use your resources. How many of you, I know I've got quite a few people that belong to the Mass and Local History and Genealogy Society, that is a mouthful in this, in this group, but how many of you belong to say that group and were the ones where say some of your ancestors lived? I just joined. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's helpful, right, to belong to the genealogy societies where they lived because you will have support and access to information that you wouldn't otherwise have. You know, um, obviously, where you live gives you the ability to say, make an appointment with me and come in and use our resources. But being involved there can also give you a benefit. So I don't know. And it, I think it was Roz just said she just joined. So uh -huh. yes. Online groups, um, Facebook, I'm on a couple there. WikiTree seems to have a lot of action in their forums. And having that support group, I mean, is nice on um, blogs. 12 Key is actually the blog of the woman, uh, Claire Kluskins, who did the National Archives presentation I watched, and that is her blog. So it has, you know, a good bit of information about the National Archives in there because that's what she does. There's online webinars. Um, I know Sandy, when we were first talking at the beginning, had mentioned how she's done a lot more recently with everything, you know, the way it is. She's had more time to be working on her genealogy again. And I did a lot of YouTube, you know, um, videos looking at different ideas. I don't think it hurts to go back and refresh because you hear something and you're like, oh, I never thought of doing it that way. Family Tree and Family Search both have Family Tree, um, FamilyTreeWebinars.com I think is the, and they do some free webinars that are pretty good. Family Search, I've been doing some of theirs so I can kind of learn to maneuver. And I think they had some today. I had posted it on Yes. Yes. I so, went. Did you? <laughs> yes. And I'll, I'll be going back after this seminar. Okay. Yeah. And if I wouldn't have scheduled this for today, if I'd realized there were all those great searching your Irish ancestors webinars going on today. So you can see it actually. Um, they're going to put it up on the family history Facebook page for a while they'll leave it up and then it'll go into the family history library listing so you can look it up with the other videos that you've been watching. So those are the points I kind of prepared, um, but any questions, thoughts, things you guys want to share that you've done that worked for you? Well, I, I volunteer at the uh, uh, Quail Hollow over okay. in Hardville, mm -hmm. and the, one of the families there, the Brumba family, had 15 children, two sets of twins, and they all survived to adulthood, if you will. And there's a book out there. When I saw that, and somebody, I don't know where I heard about it, and I went out and I found this book that was written by his younger children, if you will, 
1913, they got all the Brumbas supposedly in the world. Anyway, I went and I caught that thing. And then I says, well, wait a second. I'm after Conrad. So I put him in because he was the guy that hit Hartville. And I was able to get stuff off of that site. And they use location, in other words, and page number. And this, this book is very thick. And uh, so I, when, as I gleaned and brought all that off onto my screen, and I use a database kind of thing, but I had a field in there where I got the number. In other words, each person more or less had a letter kind of number mm -hmm. so that you could see this this was one and e1 e2 e3 etc and then the page number and now that's been four years ago but now i'm trying to get that all cleaned up and boy having that in my database i go in there in a heartbeat and see where where it came from and then some people have given me stuff and like you say they climbed a different tree and it was wrong. Whereas this thing here was done, like I say, back in 1913, they printed this book. Mm -hmm. So always knowing where you got it and mm -hmm. see if, if I had to go and read through that and I didn't have those things on there, take me a long time because there's 1100 and some descendants. I'm working on their cemetery over there right now. And there's 34 people buried in that cemetery and luckily, I've got the information on all of those people. Now, sandstone, you know, there's not much left there. Want to see about doing something with brass plating or something on the stones and uh, clean, cleaning it up and then having it red. Now, very few, there's about three granite stones in there. The rest are all uh, marble and, and sandstone. So there's not much left. Have they done any etchings where they put the paper and, and do the etching so they can pick up the text off of them? Well, no, uh, no, <laughs> not on those you can't. The, the sandstone, oh. tough to do. Tough but to do. I got the information I caught out of this book and other places as I'm able to and building it. Now, there's some people out there and people will grab it. And this guy has got thousands, he's got a hundred thousand names but no documentation. And he's come up with stuff that I've run into. And I'm saying, you know, hey, that, that isn't right. And people are taking his stuff thinking it's gospel and there's no documentation. In other words, got middle name for this one person in the Brumba family. And that's not their middle name. And mm -hmm. example uh, in, in there, they wanna keep talking about it, William Jr. Well, he wasn't William Jr. His father was, was William M. And he was William L. So, you know, the idea of making sure and the, the ages and getting it, making sure it's right, just having it out there printing is, you know, it's bad news. So that's why I want to do that in September, you know, talk about evidence and proof and what's just maybe a clue, you know, versus solid proof. That's it. That's it. And the date, you know, the, I, they, they've written a book over there. And they wrote the book about, well, Mr. and Mrs. They, they had uh, two children. No, mm -hmm. they didn't. I told the lady, it's, no, they had four children. Oh, but they died. And I'm thinking, that's not relevant for putting into a book. You know, you indicate uh, children dying young was, was very commonplace. Today, when a young kid dies, it's a catastrophe, if you will. But back in the day, you know, they, they noted and they had a tombstone for them and everything else. But, you know, somebody says, well, no, but they died young. Well, you list them. And yeah. You, you mm -hmm. know, so. Absolutely. So yeah, good. I have the one that I was talking about that I discovered uh, recently, that connection. I was, so I was playing around with that family again and I was looking at it and I was thinking, so my great grandmother, she lost her husband and two children within three years, like that, it's amazing to me. You know, because you look at lifespan and you look at, I mean, yes, that could happen to somebody now, but yeah. when you look at those records and you see that the evidence that life was a lot harder when it comes to say, you know, even me, you know, medicine and all of that, what they had access to. But I was like, wow, she, she lost her husband. He was only 36. Then she was pregnant when he died. That baby 
passed and then she lost 13 year old son yeah it's like yeah. wow that's right <laughs> but, but it's I, I know this from these documents it's like genealogy is is not just that birth date right and the death date it's getting to know the stories of our ancestors and that's why i really like it that's why i'm passionate about it because now i'm i i have goosebumps right this very second thinking about my great grandmother and what she went through right and how she had to survive and I talked to my aunt about it and she talked about how um, she had to then go live with a relative, right? And work, or not a relative, I'm sorry. She had to go live with another family and work as a servant to take care of the, of the other children because she had lost her husband. So it's, it's the story that you get from your ancestors. That's right. You're absolutely right. Yes. And the one thing that catches me when I go to an auction, uh, an estate auction, and you know, stuff's out in the yard and okay, and they're, they're selling stuff. And mm -hmm. I'll, see a, I'll see a Bible in there. And I'm saying, who was the executor of this estate that left that get away? Because, you know, in there, the births and the, and the confirmations and all the marriages and everything is written in many of those. But somebody today and, and a guy I, I've been there and the guy, I, this guy is hauling, he had a pickup truck full of books. And you know what he's doing with him? Heating his house, mm -hmm. heating his house. And the thought of a, of a, of a Bible being led, being led out of the family, mm -hmm. you know, get it to the local uh, uh, heritage kind of place, uh, the local uh, uh, whatever, they'll, they'll take those things. Those are worth their weight in gold because everything's like, in there. Yeah. I'd like to see some of that stuff even maybe worked into our collection. I'm sure we, I know we have some stuff, you know, I know there's family histories. I, I haven't got the time yet to really dig into those boxes and see what's in there, but I'd like to see more of that. Yeah. Well, and uh, for what it's worth, the Massel Museum does have, um, you know, genealogy files, sometimes a tree, sometimes family Bible information. Um, I know that it's tough for, uh, smaller historical societies and museums to save the entirety of the Bible. Obviously, the information is the thing that is the most crucial for us um, within that that object. Um, so sometimes we'll have pages that family members have cut out, or you know, we put those in a file. Um, but we do have a, a full list for what it's worth on the uh, museum website that you can search through and see if there are files, you know, with certain names that you're looking for. So, like, if you find something between Mandy and I, we could figure out a place, right? <laughs> Exactly. By our powers combined, we shall find it. Because <laughs> we nerd out at midnight, so I mean, we can figure it out. <laughs> well, the paper here in Hartville is called the Hartville News. It started mm -hmm. in like 1930. And since then, then they just sold the paper to another company, so to speak. But all of that has been scanned and digitized. Now, I, I'm trying to get some information and it's out there and I can get it. I have to request it. It costs me $5 for one of those rolls to be sent to the uh, downtown library. And, uh, and I'll, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to go through that sucker, but going through and catching the relevant information that I'm interested in, you know what I'm saying? But it's like five bucks for each roll and they've got them all the way from 1930 up until the late 90s or early 2000s. So it's all digitized. And, you know, that's something that can be done. And they're able to do a lot of it. The girls at uh, Hartville, they went in and got uh, Cindy Naylor is the lady's name. She went and she got out every birth, death. There's three things. And she indexed it and everything for whatever. So you could go and find it. And they printed that into volumes. And so that's handy if you want. You know, somebody grew up in Hartville. Hey, it was there. So uh, uh, like I say, it takes, takes time. And when you do it, it's worth its weight in gold. So, all right. Well, this has been a very interesting time. And thank, thanks for putting this on. Oh, you're welcome, and I will hope to see you all again soon. Um, this is we can make this the official end of the program, but I know that the members of the Maslin Local History Genealogy Society and I maybe have to discuss something real quick at the end here. I have a question. 
Mm -hmm. When you and Mandy are chatting away at midnight, is that overtime? <laughs> mm, no. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> I think that's what we call it, fun. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. That'd be lots of fun. Absolutely. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate you coming and joining me on my first Zoom webinar, workshop, whatever we want to call it. It was wonderful. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you.